Hi, I'm Karina, an experienced design intern here at Another Tomorrow. Similar to many of us, the COVID situation has kind of turned my world upside down. For me, this meant leaving Stockholm and returning back to my home country, Singapore. I guess I should provide some context. I'm a student from Singapore who joined Another Tomorrow as part of a school entrepreneurship program. I was meant to stay for a year, but was recalled back by my school after seven months when Europe grew to become the epicenter of the pandemic. So now I'm back in Singapore, where it's hot and sunny almost all year round. I know many people in Stockholm might perhaps rejoice at this weather, but trust me, I actually much prefer Stockholm's weather. I guess the grass is always greener on the other side. But besides the drastic difference in temperature, I also find myself to be at the crossroads of two very different cultures. It's funny because when I was in Stockholm and people asked me about the differences between our cultures, I often felt like I couldn't bring up something profound. I mean, sure, there were a few things, but I actually felt like I was more surprised by the similarities. Both cultures are more reserved, in the sense that people are nice but not overly friendly, people are generally respectful of each other's personal space, and we all follow rules quite well, etc. I know these may sound like very subtle things, but as someone who has lived in Singapore their whole lives and has just a general subpar understanding of Western culture, I guess this is quite different from what I had potentially anticipated. Regardless, this pandemic, and being recalled back to Singapore, has opened up my eyes to a whole new set of cultural nuances that I'm still trying to unpack and digest. Both cities couldn't be more different in their approaches to deal with the pandemic, and in my opinion, this largely boils down to culture. To illustrate, I think I should share with you a bit about what Singapore looks like now. Most of the city is plastered with duct tape, from bus stops, parks and restaurants. This is to make sure we have visual indicators of where to stand or sit in order to practice social distancing. When we enter a building like a shopping mall, we have to scan a QR code and do a little check-in so that the government is able to do more efficient contact tracing in the event we have had contact with someone else who has the virus. Most cafes and restaurants and coffee shops are open, but we are unable to dine in. Only takeout is legal. We have to wear a mask if we're outside, unless we're exercising. And we are also only allowed outside for very specific reasons. To exercise, as mentioned, if we're employed in essential services, or we have to run errands that fall within these essential services categories. We're also not allowed to interact and meet people from other households, so I actually haven't seen my grandmother or anyone apart from my immediate family since I've been back. This is also due to unfortunate timing, as while these policies were not in place when I came back to Singapore, I had voluntarily quarantined and self-isolated for two weeks, and then these policies were introduced. I'm assuming right now that, to some people, these measures may be considered extremely drastic, maybe even an infringement of civil rights. But for the most part, I'd say that most people in Singapore generally agree with these measures imposed by the government and are accepting of it. I don't think any of us like them exactly, but we understand the need for them. And of course, these measures affect some groups of people more than others, and there's still many implications of these policies. But I guess maybe having lived through the SARS outbreak and hearing the national narratives about how we overcame this adds up to a general trust in government and their handling of the situation. Singapore is also generally known to be an island of enforcement. I don't wish to comment on whether this is right or wrong, but I'd say it's quite ingrained in our culture. Compared to my co-workers and friends in Another Tomorrow living in Stockholm, compared to my co-workers and friends in Another Tomorrow living in Stockholm, this is a far cry from what's going on in their city. I'm not going to talk much about Stockholm because I feel like you would know better than I do what's happening. But to me, it's so interesting that both cities have high trust in government, yet the execution of day-to-day -day policies are so different. Stockholm is almost an antithesis to enforcement, and in general, strong proponents of individual social responsibility. I can see why Stockholm has chosen to tackle the COVID-19 situation in the way that they have, and I think it's largely due to their culture and the relationships that people have with society at large that they're able to carry this out. While I think this is really admirable, I feel like it would never work in Singapore's context, and the same can probably be said vice versa. It's taken me quite a while to process how different our cultures are, and I'm definitely no expert on this, and I'm speaking from my own little bubble of my experiences and my biases and my generalizations of Stockholm and Singapore. But it's made me reflect a lot on cultural relativism and how that affects attitudes, behavior, and beliefs. At the end of the day, I don't think it's fair to compare the strategies of both cities, each city is simply doing their best on what they believe is more suitable or sustainable for their citizens based on their own set of cultural norms. And I think that's okay. This experience has definitely shifted the way I think about society or policy because sometimes it's really easy to look at something at face value and dismiss or critique it due to lack of cultural understanding. 
but we have to always look at what's beyond the surface. Here at Another Tomorrow, we've always championed diversity and how multiple perspectives can lead to higher levels of innovation. If anything, I believe that there's much we can learn from both cultures and can't wait to see what interesting ideas this blend of perspectives might bring. Until next time, stay safe and stay curious.